Okay, in this session we're going to talk about uh, patent documents and uh, patent data fields in particular. So when we think about the question, what is a patent, I guess we can describe it in, in two main ways. The first is as a particular form of intellectual property right, and the second is as a type uh, of document. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of a patent as a form of intellectual property right, and as you can see, there's quite a lot of uh, text here, but basically it's a temporary uh, grant of a right to exclude others uh, in jurisdictions where a patent is in force. The patent rights are territorial in nature. Uh, they only apply uh, in jurisdictions where a patent is in force. Generally uh, last for around 20 years, but they can be opposed or revoked. Um, and there are a whole set of eligibility criteria. Now, for the purposes of uh, patent analytics, we really need to think about patents as a type of document. Uh, so there are two things here that we need to understand. The first is the structure of patent documents and the data fields within a patent document. And the second is the strengths and weaknesses of different patent databases as a means uh, for obtaining patent data. Uh, and I'm going to talk uh, mostly about the structure of patent documents in this session. So. We have seven uh, basic uh, data types, and I'll go into these in a little bit more detail. So we have a range of, of dates. We have a range of numbers, which serve as unique identifiers for documents and allow us to track the relationships between documents. We have uh, names, notably the names of applicants, who are also commonly called assignees, and the names of inventors. We also have the names typically of patent lawyers or attorneys. Uh, we have classification codes, such as the International Patent Classification and the Cooperative Patent Classification, which allow us to find uh, documents in specific areas of the patent library system. Then we have uh, free text fields, uh, the title, the abstract, the description, the claims, and for example, DNA sequence data. Uh, then we have images, typically diagrams. And finally, we have a set of uh, additional information such as legal status uh, information or information in public registries uh, linked to uh, patent databases. Now I'm going to uh, use an example uh, that a few years ago was quite uh, controversial from the uh, Craig Venter Institute in the United States which is the quest to uh, create uh, synthetic genomes as part of the uh, pursuit of uh, the creation of synthetic or artificial life, as it's being called, uh, with the rise of what's also called uh, whole genome engineering uh, being uh, a significant area of uh, debate uh, and controversy. Now, what we have here uh, is the uh, front page, also known as the Biblio, uh, of a patent application from uh, the Venter Institute um, that relates to synthetic genomes, which provides methods uh, for constructing a synthetic genome, comprising uh, generating and assembling nucleic acid cassettes uh, from portions of the genome, and those are then uh, stuck together in various ways. Now I'm going to dwell on this front page for uh, a couple of minutes, uh, because here we have uh, six sets uh, of data. Now the first set of data that we have are uh, numbers as identifier numbers. So we have the international publication number. Uh, we have an international application number here. Then we have uh, priority data, where if we put the country code US onto the front of that, we'd have US 6742542. Now in practice, we would, the earliest of these numbers is here, priority data, followed by that dates to 6th of December 2005. That then leads to an international filing date uh, for an international application uh, in December 2006. And finally, the international application is published on the 28th of February 2008. So that also covers off uh, our second set of data, which is dates. So note here that we go from our priority date, the first filing date in 2005, 
That is then submitted internationally in 2006 and is then published in 2008. And in the process, a set of identifier numbers are generated. So we start with US 6742542 here. That then moves to become PCT US 2006 X, Y, and Z. And then we have this formal international publication number here. The third set of data that we have available is names. So we have uh, applicant names, in this case, the J. Craig Venter Institute. Notice the additional information that's in the brackets here, which is uh, the country code for United States and the actual address, again, with the country code here. Then we have uh, additional applicants, which is uh, Clyde Hutchinson, uh, with the address and additional country information. Then we have uh, inventor information, which is the actual inventors of the claimed invention, again with some address field data that we could use for other purposes. Then we have the, the patent agent information with uh, address field data. Uh, we won't worry about the designated states. The fourth category uh, of information that we have is the international classification. Uh, in some cases you will see the cooperative patent classification as well. I'll come back to that. Now uh, these classification codes basically tell us about the technology area or areas that are involved in a particular application. So in this case CO7H tells us uh, that this has something to do with nucleic acid. C12P is something to do is going to be something in general terms to do with uh, biotechnology. Uh, C12N506 relates to some aspect of biotechnology that relates to animals, I believe. So if we looked these actual codes up, we would get quite a precise uh, description uh, of the technology areas involved in this particular patent application. Uh, so. The next uh, set of information that we have are text fields. Uh, there are just two here, which is the title uh, in capitals. Then we have the abstract, which we could use for uh, text mining. Uh, we also have an image uh, down here, which relates to one of the, uh, the assembly of one of the nucleic acid uh, cassettes, but we don't have uh, other information not just on this uh, front page. So now, now let's look at the exactly the same information in the SPASnet uh, database. And I'll just point out that these uh, blue markers here, if you click on those, they, these will actually take you to uh, the document uh, in SPASnet. So here we have basically the same information as is contained on the front page. Notice the country codes here. Uh, next to the inventor and the applicant names. We have both the international classification and the cooperative uh, classification. Uh, and if we were in a SPASnet, we could click on those. We have uh, the priority information, which has now been uh, transformed slightly with the country code on the front, the dates here at the end, uh, and the P here means provisional uh, patent application, I believe. Uh, that then leads to our uh, application number, which uh, a couple of years later leads to our publication number. Now, the publication number is almost always uh, the easiest uh, information to uh, obtain, but we need to just keep an eye on the relationship that here we have our first filing, here we have our submission of our international application, uh, then we have our publication of that international uh, application. So as we can see here, we have a nicely uh, structured uh, approach uh, to the patent document. Uh, so the next thing we will see is the description. Uh, now, this tells us about related applications that have been uh, submitted, um, mainly provisional applications on uh, introduction of genomes into organisms, error correction methods, and so on. We have, this tells us that uh, this was federally funded research. And further down, we'll have uh, a lot of text fields that provide a lot more detailed information. Uh, 
Now, the, the real uh, meat is in uh, the claims, uh, particularly we need to pay close attention to claim one, which frames the rest of the claims. And so here we learned that this is a method for constructing a synthetic genome that involves assembling nucleic acid cassettes. And then we'll have a whole set uh, of subsidiary claims uh, stemming from claim one. Um, so this, of course, is particularly imp important for text mining purposes in establishing uh, what an invention is actually about and what is actually being claimed. Uh, the next piece of information is the family uh, information. Uh, this can quite often be difficult to uh, obtain from public patent databases. Uh, here we can see that there are nine applications that link back to our original first filing, our priority filing. Uh, and here we, that's the international application. Here we have an international uh, an application in Australia. Um, this code here is B2 is telling me that this became a patent grant. Uh, we also have a Canadian and a Chinese application. So this family data is actually telling us where else in the world this particular application has been pursued. Uh, following the link from the priority document through the international application uh, onto uh, the national uh, jurisdictions where uh, a follow-on application has been filed. Uh, now, it's important to bear in mind that uh, patent applicants typically stand on the shoulder of giants. That is, those giants are earlier patent applicants, typically. Uh, and here in the cited documents field, we can see the existing patent filings uh, that are shaping uh, this um, application and the limiting uh, what can be claimed as uh, prior art. Uh, there are actually two sets of information here. So we have a couple of patent applications, this one from a geobiosciences, and we also have one. Uh, and, there, ah, and then we have uh, two uh, literature science citations, which are non-patent literature, uh, one uh, from nature and the other uh, from, in fact, the inventors of this uh, application, uh, current application. So cited documents. Uh, limit the scope of what an applicant can claim, but they also provide us with really interesting information about uh, technology areas that are shaping uh, a particular emerging area of science and technology. So uh, we can also see what impact uh, a, an individual application is having on other applicants within the patent system through the citing documents field. So we can see here that um, I, a 2014 uh, application uh, coming out of the UK from Discover for bacterial engineering uh, is citing uh, the original Venter application as is uh, another application actually from the same applicant synthetic genomics uh, in, also in 2011. So here we're getting an understanding of what is the impact uh, of a particular filing on other applicants in the patent uh, system. So uh, the final piece of information, and this uh, is notoriously difficult to interpret, is legal status information, which tells us uh, what the events are that are associated with them. The uh, a set of uh, relatively, um, I think it's fair to call them obscure codes. Uh, that link to this, uh, but this can be uh, very important uh, information. So, to round up, what we've done in this session is we've walked through some of the most important of the patent data fields. Uh, in practice, those fields are the building blocks for sophisticated patent analysis. So what we're going to do in future sessions is focus on uh, retrieving data with these fields, then we're gonna clean up that data, we're going to map trends, we're going to map networks, and then we're going to finish off with geographic mapping. Now, if you'd like to learn more, uh, you're welcome to visit the uh, project homepage on GitHub. You can access the materials directly on GitHub, and you can also, of course, uh, you're very welcome to add your own materials. You can also contact me uh, with comments, corrections, or suggestions. 
Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>